it has one big nut here for tightening onto the bar and then a little side nut here and then the nut on the bottom and then um, the, the side clamp here. So I'm going to tell you about this nut on the side. Can anybody venture a guess at what it's called? It has a name. It's a very important name. All right, this is called the F nut. Can anybody guess why it's called that? Well, I mean, there's a very simple explanation of it comes off kind of like it's like an F, you see. But the reason my lighting instructor at USU called it that is because if people over tighten it, people start cussing. Because they're up there with the lights, and it's like, move, oh, dang it! Like, anyway, don't over tighten the, the lighting instruments. Um, I'm going to take off my coat here real quick. Anyway, so it is important that you use the F nut how it's supposed to be used and not let the clamp bolt do the job for it. So, um, if I have this, this little side. Um, this little side clamp controls, so if I tighten, or if I loosen this up, it controls the, the vertical tilt of the light. Whereas the housing up here controls the side to side motion. And there's a couple different bolts here. This one keeps this housing attached to the clamp. If this gets loose, it can rotate because it's not, it's not holding on. And your, your lights can rotate that way, but if you leave them like that, if, if this is loose and it stays loose, it will actually start to wear out the, the thread on it until this clamp becomes useless. Don't let it get to that. Additionally, this one, if you just have these ones always tight and just deal with the F nut, it's much simpler for people to remember like it's not moving and they don't, and they like loosen up everything and then it's a problem. So to loosen it, um, the F nut is kind of small, so in, in tight spaces it can be kind of tricky. But it just takes a couple rotations and now it's completely loose. When you tighten it, um, the rule, rule of the trade is you get it finger tight. Finger tight and a quarter turn. So as tight as your fingers can get it, and then you take it. And then not quite a, I didn't do quite a corner turn because it felt tight. Don't tighten it more than it needs to be tightened because it will dig into the bolt here and it will be really hard for the guy working on the lights to get it off. And you all seem like really nice people. I don't want you to swear at my lights. They're not mine anymore, but I, I like them. Yeah, please don't. Um, anyway, so that's that. Same deal with this one. Um, these bolts on the front shouldn't be too tight. The only exceptions, because there are lights that we do need to be tight, these ones on the side need to be tightened so that they will not move. Because all of these ones are hanging. This one's hanging, it's not going places. Those ones could, because if it just starts jiggling and it's loose and it's just like, and it ends up down on top of the other lights and then we got problems. So those ones you do actually need to tighten down and make sure that they're gonna stay. These ones, just make sure, similar idea, you get a finger tight, quarter turn. So finger tight, and you put your wrench on it. Helps if you go the right way. Quarter turn, and it should be pretty solid for all intents and purposes. Um, anyway, if you'll notice, for people that are gonna be working on our lights, we do have some lights that, um, violate this rule. So if you'll come over here and notice that we have scoops that are like hanging off to the side. There's a reason we have them that way, but it's not the norm. So unless you need the light to be hanging out sideways like that, do not have them hanging out sideways. Those ones are tightened down because we needed the, the angle, we needed the lights to hit out this way and not that way. So they're over that way so that the curtain actually blocks, blocks the light. And depending on what y'all will be doing lighting in the future, it might be a good idea to change that. Other reasons you might do that, if you follow me back this way, again, not recommended, but there are times when you have a lot of these lights. So these are our color lights. Um, we don't have scoops over there because there's not really room for that many scoops. 
we're going to talk about plugs. Plugs have issues specifically on the back row. So all of the lights over there work and we need them, but it's a lot of lights in one space. And so we have them kind of spread out so that we can accommodate more lights in a smaller space. Not recommended, but it's kind of all we have for this part back here. So we'll talk about that more in a moment. But any questions about the hardware so far? Anything? All right. Good, good, good. So um, last lights that we have, if you all want to step up here, um, drop any blunt objects that you might have because we don't want to drop our stuff onto these lights. So these are called bar lights. Can anybody make a guess as to why they're called that? Because it's a big bar of light. Very good. All right. Lighting people. Brilliant. Anyway, so these ones are actually, each of these lights up here has one light to one plug. But if you'll notice, these ones all string together. So the reason that is, is we have four plugs. The amber, amber light strings into the amber light, strings into the amber light, strings into the amber light, strings into the amber. All of the amber are on one plug. So we power up that plug and all of the amber lights come on. Or if we want the green one, all of the green ones come on. So it's, these ones are, are very simple for controlling color pretty consistently. Um, the rule with these ones is the more that you have daisy chains together, that's what it's called, is when you chain them together, it's called daisy chain. Um, the more that you have chained together, the less power output they'll have. So we have four of them strung together right now. It gives a very consistent light, but not a very bright light necessarily. And it depends on the plug. I feel like we get really good light out of these ones. So we don't worry about these ones necessarily. But anyway, just to, to keep in note, if you string them together like this, you can get less power that way. But it works for us so far. That too. So. With these ones down here, um, these little panels open up and you can slide these out. And do we still have the box of lenses for them? I feel like we have some lenses. I think we do have some, but I don't know where they are. I don't know either. Anyway, so don't break them. Then you won't have to worry about it. But we do have some replacement lenses. You can order some if you do need them. But for the most part, just don't break them and it won't be a problem. Um, these ones also use um, standard light bulbs just from the hardware store. Makes them pretty convenient. Um, if you need to get more bulbs, I recommend the highest lumen output. So a lumen is the uh, measurement for light. It's how much light um, a bulb can output. So when you're at the hardware store, I recommend looking for the bulbs that output the highest lumens, because um, that's how we'll get the most light out of these ones. Anyway, these are pretty simple. So let's move on to the next item of business, eh? Unless anybody has questions. Any questions? All right. Fair enough. Well,